but it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at the software known as TRCC or Thermal Right Control Center, which can be used with devices such as this, the Frozen Warframe. I'm going to show you how to get the software, how to download it, how to go through the various settings, and uh, hopefully, this will give you some ideas of some of the things you can actually do with this very cool little LCD screen or IPS screen, I should say. Also, big shout out to Andy Archer for sending this over for a review. Much appreciated. With all that said, let's head over to the computer and take a closer look. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to head over to this website, so thermorite.com forward slash support forward slash download. And at the top there, you've got the downloads for the various versions available. This is the TRCC, Water Cooling LED Screens Control Software, for the Frozen Warframe, the Core Vision, I can't pronounce that one, and the Elite Vision. So just click on the English version or obviously whichever version you want to. Bizarrely, at the moment, it says their latest version, TRCC 1.2.4. Uh, maybe that is for the Chinese version or whatever that is. The English version does seem to be a little bit older, which is version 1.2.3. So I've already downloaded this in the background. So we can head over to our downloads folder and it is a zipped file. So we're gonna to need to right click and choose extract all. And we'll extract it to the same location. We've also got some version update notes in there, which you can read those if you want to. And we've got the actual setup file. So let's go ahead and double click on that one. You get the user account control come up, click yes, and then choose a destination. We'll just go with the default one and we'll create a desktop shortcut. Click on install, shouldn't take too long at all. It's around about 106, 107 megabytes in total. So that is finished, excellent stuff. So we can close all these windows down, we no longer need those. And we've got our icon on the desktop, so we'll double click on that. It is a little bit annoying that it asks for user account control every single time you run the program or when you restart the computer. There are various methods of getting around that if you want to. Uh, maybe if there's enough of you that want that, I'll do a separate video on it. But otherwise, just click on yes. And then this is running in the background and you should see that your screen has illuminated. To open the program, go down to the bottom here and click on the TRCC icon. If for some reason you've changed the USB port or moved something, you will find if you go into Device Manager and Show Hidden Devices, do that by going up here, View and Show Hidden Devices, you'll see there's a bunch of extra Excel USB, PRC system USB devices. All of the ones which are grayed out, you can remove and that will prevent any USB errors. So leave it so you've just got one left in there. Actually, we'll get rid of the data traveler as well because that's not connected either. And that should stop you having any problems with synchronization. So this is the software loaded up. So over here, frozen warframes. So this is how you choose this section. You can also go to this part here. You can choose to have it start automatically when Windows loads up. The choice is yours. It says there, latest version now, and we're on software version 1.23, whereas really it should be 1.24. Not entirely sure why that is. We've also got a link there, hyperlink to Thermal Rights website. You can choose your languages here as well. Although, because this is the English version, English is the only one allowed. So, yeah, a little bit of irrelevance there. But anyway, so we go back to the frozen warframe. So here we've got our display of the actual device itself. And also all of these you can kind of move around, move positions, etc., etc. Here you've got the display angles, so you can choose whether it's on a 90 degree. So if you've got it mounted in a different position, you can choose to switch those around. You've got your units, so you can choose to show units or not. So if it's Fahrenheit or Celsius or megahertz, all those kinds of things. You've also got the option to choose between centigrade and Fahrenheit. And you've got the save as. So in here, for instance, if we type mub test two, click on save, and we get another mub test file there. You can, if you want to, show all themes, default themes, and just user themes. The choice is yours. And at the bottom here, we've got sections M1 through to M6. So these are actually what the individual things are reading. So M1 is reading the CPU temperatures. If you double click on this, there's an absolute ton of things you can choose here, whatever you want to choose as actually your display. So you can have a really good look through all those, drive remaining life there at the bottom if you want to. 
Okay, the choices are entirely yours, but you can only click on one of these, obviously, it's one per section. When you're happy with your selection, click the tick, and you can go back, and then again, you can go into M2, change that one, M3, etc., etc. so you get the general idea. You've also got the option to import and export, or import and import, nice bit of English there. So, yeah, it's a relatively straightforward application. Also, if you're in one of your themes there, you can click on the settings, and then this is where we can actually customize the settings. So you can add customized text. So we'll type in Mike's unboxing. And as you can see, that's appearing there with the appropriate color. You can, if you want to, change the font, change it to whatever you want, and also the size, whether it's bold, italics, etc. And of course, you can move all this around however you see fit. Space these out a little bit so uh, they look a little bit nicer. Maybe, for instance, with the date, this has got a good one because we can actually remove the custom text now or we can leave it. The date time, you can choose whether that's on or off. And also you can choose the layout. So year, month, date, month, date, date, month, year, and date, month. So if we choose date, month, that actually fits in there a little bit better. Although there is a temperature thing there, so it's probably not the best place for it. Again, you can move all this stuff around so it makes sense. So for instance, on here, because we've got GPU temperature, this is a picture of a month, I guess. So it's probably better off to have that there. Again, you can play with this as much as you like, do whatever, make it suit your particular purpose. Also you've got things like the system info, and you can have it as a tile, rotate. So you can have it, it changes. So it's probably better if this is just a single display in the middle. Again, you can choose which you want, and you can choose which ones it cycles through. So you can change all those. So this section here, which we've got highlighted, actually, if we get rid of system info, detective layer and the background, and our custom text, and the date line, you can see there's nothing at all there. So put on system info. So again, with this, you can move it to however you want to. And this is probably a bit clearer now, so you can see what's doing. So this is doing a tile rotate of each one of those. And also you can change the interval time, so you can speed that up or slow that down. And of course, as we said earlier, you can change the fonts as well. So if for the number you want it to be a little bit bigger, you can choose that. Maybe if the text is a little bit small for your liking, you can increase the size of that. And there we go. So if you just want a very plain looking thing, then you can do that. The choice again, it's entirely up to you. There's lots of things you can do. If you want to as well now, you can put the background back on or just have a decorative layer of which you can choose many. So you can have a PNG. I don't think I've got any PNG images. Actually, I have AMD. Let's grab that and see what that's like. Nope, too large. So you have to have a certain size for those. I think the, uh, yeah, the resolution has to be the same as the screen res. So you'd have to have some quite small PNGs for that. Same really is for the background as well. So depending on what your background is, it has to be either an IMG or a GIF or you can do screen projection. So you can choose a specific part of the screen to display. So we've got our desktop there and you can choose to move it to a certain part if you want to. Again, it's kind of cool how you can do these things. So there you've got that, you can drag that around. So if you want to maybe have that part there, so you can have your windows time and date and then move your other bits up here a little bit more. Again, it's a little bit of fun. You can play around with it and do whatever suits you. When you're done, you can click on the save button there and then that'll save as whatever you've saved it as. So if you go back into one of these, let's go through them quickly. So theme one, this is one of the stock ones. Theme two, theme three, and again, you can modify these, move them around should you wish to, and then save them as your own. Similar sort of thing here. You've got some animated ones. I actually quite like the animated ones. So again, if we go into the settings there, if you don't want the animated background, you can just get rid of the background altogether and have a quite a nice layout. And again, you can choose if you want the time, whether you want just the date in the month or the years, all those kinds of things. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can uh, tweak and play around with in here. Just make sure if you do make any changes, you save them to whatever is appropriate. And again, you've got some pre-built in ones which are quite nice animated. 
I actually quite like this one. I think this is one of the uh, the prettier ones. But of course, you can choose to make up any of your own. You're only limited, really, by your uh, own creativity and the images you have. And again, like for this one here, this is actually pretty cool, but your CPU temperature and the GPU temperature, you can really not see those particularly well at all. So let's change those. I'll change the text to white so we can actually see it. There we go. That, I think that is uh, that's much nicer. You can actually see what is going on now. And if you want to do the remove the decorative layers around the outside, you can do. You can remove the background as we said previously. And depending on which one we've got selected, so we can choose that one. We'll choose that text and make that white as well, just so it stands out a little bit from the background. And there we go. Of course, you can make it larger if you want to. Uh, let's make that to 36. I'll we'll move that across a little bit so we can see it. So yeah, you get the general idea. It's uh, very much one of those kind of drag and drop type things. You can just move things wherever you want to. Make things ridiculously large if you want to. Have something completely abstract. Ultimately, it's going to be down to the individual, what you prefer, or make up some of your own. I, mean, I, uh, I think I quite like this one as a default one. It pretty much does everything that I want it to. And of course, if you want to, you can have it so that it will show the different settings. You might need to uh, move these around a little bit more. So, yeah, you can tweak it to pretty much suit whatever your needs are, which is actually a lot better than some of the others. And actually in there, I've noticed the units makes it a little bit too big, so we can reduce that because we kind of know what the units are going to be anyway. So, yeah, it's a kind of nice piece of software. As with all things, it will be updated over time. So this video may not stand the test of time, but at least hopefully this will give you an idea and somewhat of an induction of how the Thermalright TRCC software works and how you can manipulate it. So there we go, there is a little bit of a tour around the TRCC or Thermal Right Control Center. Hopefully the video has been useful to you. If it has, smash that like button. If you want to see more content of this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.